I'm uh, Stefano Di Paola. I am the CTO at Minded Security. I um, am director of um, research uh, labs uh, and uh, in the uh, spare time I like to uh, also volunteer uh, for OWASP, which uh, I, I think uh, everybody here knows what it is. And um, I also uh, like to research and find bugs uh, and um, mostly on the client side. So I um, found and uh, disclosed several bugs on uh, <coughs> PDF uh, Acrobat Reader plugins, Flash, uh, um, and uh, of course, Inter Internet Explorer, and so on. What, we are, what are we going to, <coughs> to talk about today? Mm, if we, we mm, the OWASP top 10 uh, have been mentioned uh, a couple of times today and uh, is um, known to be a requirement uh, for certifications like PCI and um, other um, when dealing uh, about uh, application security. Um, among uh, um, all these uh, most critical uh, web application security uh, risks, uh, there is uh, the number three that uh, uh, is one of the uh, w most widespread um, issues uh, uh, around and are very, e even if uh, they are considered very easy to find, uh, they, it, it still, it, it keeps being there. It keeps being uh, exploited and uh, it, at least it seems it's not that easy to, to fix it. Um, this uh, um, is uh, what is uh, mm, uh, described as um, cross-scripting analysis. And uh, what is cross-scripting? Cross-scripting is um, an attack that exploits uh, um, a vulnerability that allows an attacker to um, embed some way by injecting a malicious uh, uh, code inside uh, um, the HTML, uh, which means uh, uh, the web page, and um, permitting uh, so that when the browser um, runs the, the page, uh, it will run also the malicious payload, the malicious code, and uh, it will be uh, considered as trusted. Uh, of course, in the context of uh, the domain where that, he, that uh, is hosting the page. So, what, which uh, is the impact? The impact is uh, the fact that uh, uh, the attackers can actually access uh, all the information that are um, available uh, during the user session, uh, in, uh, during web, na web navigation, and um, also uh, spoof content uh, and um, hijack uh, session cookies, which is uh, uh, session uh, um, identification numbers, and, uh, and so on. Also, of course, using malware, uh, try to lure the, uh, the victim to uh, install, install malware, and, and so on. Um, it seems that detectability is very easy. Why? Because uh, considering the theory of uh, what uh, um, cross-site scripting is, the, um, the attacker here uh, tries to send some uh, uh, evil um, JavaScript, which is, can be considered malicious code, uh, to a server. The server embeds that code inside the HTML um, page and sends it to the victim user and the browser will uh, run it um, by considering it as trust because uh, it comes directly from the server, uh, from, the, from the web server. Of course, the web server has uh, an issue a problem in the code, in the software, when the page is generated that allow, allows um, the, malicious input, the malicious code to be embedded um, without any uh, validation somewhere, simply. <coughs> so, what can uh, be done on uh, uh, 
um, on the server side, which I mean, I mean uh, what can the company uh, do uh, in order to identify uh, these kind of issues before they are being exploited? Um, by using security scanners, by testing, um, and of course by using sensors on the server side like for example IDS, IPS and so on, web application firewall, application firewall in general. <coughs> but where? Uh, of course uh, um, the payload must be identified when uh, it goes uh, to the server from the attacker or when it comes out uh, um, and goes to the, the user victim some, some way uh, by the security scanner which uh, has the ability to um, uh, observe uh, input and output and correlate them. Uh, there, are th the, there are three types of uh, uh, cross scripting. The first two are very, um, very, no very popular, uh, at least in the security community. And the, one, the first one is called cross scripting reflected. And this because uh, in some way the attacker must uh, um, convince the victim to uh, visit some page that contains uh, uh, the um, code that will apply the attack directly from the victim's browser to uh, the, the server. And it's the victim itself that will send the malicious code to the browser and receive uh, the, whole the whole page with the malicious code embedded. Um, and so it's, uh, um, uh, it, it, it's like a self-attack. Uh, self um, of course, also in this case, uh, as in the th theoretical one, um, this kind of issues are considered to be fa um, easily um, easy to um, to be find, found by security scanner and sensors. Uh, the second one is uh, the stored cross scripting, and uh, the payload, uh, the malicious payload. Um, think about, I don't know, mailing, ma mail uh, uh, server, web, web mails or uh, forums uh, and so on, uh, where the attacker sends a malicious payload to the server. The server takes it and stores it some, some way like uh, as, as it is a message or uh, an email and then um, Add it, add, uh, will add it uh, later uh, as uh, the content to the page that will be sent to the other users that will request the page. Of course, in this case, uh, uh, when the attacker uh, sends the payload, the sens a sensor like a web application firewall or so on uh, can uh, um, identify them. Um, in the second step, uh, when the, the, the victim uh, asks for a page, the browser will actually add um, the um, malicious payload, malicious code, and send it together with the uh, embedded in the HTML page. Here, of course, the scanners and the sensor are able uh, some way to uh, identify it. A third type uh, it's been known since uh, 2005, it's been formalized uh, since 2005, but still um, is, it was considered like the uh, not, so, not so common, okay, uh, at the time at least. <coughs> what happens here? The, here, uh, what happens is that um, the malicious payload is uh, uh, taken by the browser and the code which uh, uh, embeds it uh, in the HTML page is inside the browser because it's, uh, uh, it's um, treated by, the, the malicious pay payload is treated by code inside the browser, inside the page, like JavaScript in this case, and uh, um, is used as part of the, of the page itself. So, 
we have seen that security scanners and sensor act at uh, networking level. Here, what happens is that since the payload is sent uh, um, directly some, some way to uh, the victim and uh, the, code, uh, the, the code is generated and uh, embedded directly from the browser in the browser, in the page, there is no network uh, streaming stream. So it's very hard for automated systems uh, to identify them. And if you cannot identify them, you cannot fix them. Um, let me show you <coughs> um, a very small video about uh, um, an attack on Yahoo Webmail that was uh, performed last year. And uh, it results to be Um, result to be, uh, oops, it results to be, uh, sorry, just a moment, okay, uh, result to be a DOM-based cross-scripting, and uh, uh, it was uh, very hard to find for Yahoo, because it, uh, it wasn't possible to identify the payload nor the um, um, injected page. So, uh, this is the attack. Uh, attackers, attacker creates uh, an email trying to um, send uh, a malicious, uh, uh, an email with uh, a link that contains a page uh, to uh, a victim that uh, is it's supposed to, to, to be using the um, web, Yahoo webmail. So just uh, sends uh, uh, an email and uh, embeds a link whose link uh, will be attacker.com slash evil.html. Uh, of course, uh, it will be like uh, uh, cutekittens.com or something like that. Now, on the victim's um, environment, uh, is using uh, Windows, as you can see and uh, um, it just logs in uh, uh, victim uh, in uh, the Yahoo webmail and sees that there is uh, a new, uh, several new uh, emails and uh, the attacker email as well. He clicks on it. Hey, there is a link, let's click on it. Nothing happens, it seems. But uh, since you, uh, after the attack, happens, the victim browser is redirected to Yahoo. Now we are on the attacker side and uh, what happens here is that uh, the malicious code uh, injected uh, a payload uh, in, the, in the victim's browser and uh, uh, which actually collected the cookie, the session cookie from the Yahoo uh, session, uh, email session of the victim and sent it to the uh, browser site. These are the collected information of the victim. Now, the attacker just get uh, what he considered to be uh, the interesting part change the value of uh, the session cookie uh, in his own browser, the session cookie is victim's session cookie. So just reload the page and uh, he gets access to the victim's account because of course um, Yahoo sees the token uh, that belongs to the victim and just uh, um, uh, identify the token with the, with the victim. Okay, this was, this, uh, was uh, um, DOM-based cross-scripting um, in uh, 
on uh, Yahoo Mail, webmail, and it was found uh, it was found uh, last year, I guess, uh, on March. Let's talk about impacts and concerns about the DOM-based process scripting, which uh, uh, we have seen uh, that uh, uh, risk analysis uh, of the cross-site scripting uh, um, attack, generic attack, um, is, is, uh, is this one, is the one shown. Um, does the risk analysis fit uh, the DOM-based cross-site scripting as well? Actually, as we have seen before, previously, uh, detecta the detectability is not very easy. So impacts and risks are identical, but detectability is lower um, because it's harder to, uh, for defenders to find them because automatic scanners uh, use, uh, mostly use networking requests and observe for responses and um, um, uh, still, uh, also, of course, a sensor on the server side uh, cannot see the payload. And uh, yet, DOM-based cross scripting is still part of the top 10 since it's uh, the third type of cross scripting attack. DOM-based cross scripting can be uh, considered as a subcategory of uh, um, a, a wider um, class of, of issues that can be called, of course, client-side issues. And uh, uh, when uh, the, uh, the impact that um, leads to um, execution of JavaScript, then it can be co called DOM-based cross-scripting, which is uh, the original uh, uh, name that it was uh, uh, given. But there are several other uh, nuances of uh, uh, this kind of attack, and uh, all of them have uh, uh, different impacts. So it's possible to exfiltrate just exfiltrate data because you don't you cannot uh, inject uh, really JavaScript. So you cannot really control the whole page uh, or the whole domain, but uh, you actually can uh, with the particular techniques just uh, get uh, the content of the page uh, by inferring uh, particular uh, um, um, behaviors of the browser. Uh, let's see what's the trend. Uh, the trend is since uh, uh, 2005, in 2005, the server side versus client side code, line of code, uh, were like 90% uh, uh, of server-side code versus client-side one. Uh, in 2010, it's like 70% uh, uh, to 30%. Uh, the use of uh, libraries since uh, 2011, uh, the, the, the higher one, the green one, uh, the green line uh, is the use of libraries uh, of no, no library in uh, uh, the page in uh, 2011. And now the most used, it, it was uh, more than uh, 60%, and the most used library here now is jQuery. Uh, so uh, the next uh, question is uh, about third party JavaScript. We have talked about, uh, uh, do you trust your uh, operative system? Uh, we've talked about OpenSSL. We all have trust OpenSSL, of course, uh, but we, th we think that our, every uh, software we use is uh, uh, reasonably uh, secure, but the, it is a very fuzzy limit, no? Uh, we just took uh, uh, the first uh, 100 uh, site, top sites from Alexa um, and extracted all the script sources in order to understand which one, uh, if uh, there were at least one external JavaScript, uh, so third party, considered as third party JavaScript. So the 70% uh, contained at least one third party JavaScript. So 
do you tr trust, uh, consider, of course, that um, Google Analytics uh, is third-party JavaScript. Uh, advertising banners are third-party JavaScript. Uh, Google AdWords, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, double-click uh, and so on. So the question is, do you trust third-party code in your site because you are embedding something inside your page? Of course, it's not malicious per se, but if uh, it uh, um, contains some uh, code vulnerability in the code that can be exploited, it, your, your site is going to be vulnerable to DOM-based cross-site attack and client-side issues. So let me rephrase it. Uh, have you ever taste, tested, not tasted, <laughs> tested your third-party JavaScript? Uh, probably uh, in a very light way, at least. So let's talk about how to identify wh which are the, the methodology uh, what are the methodologies that can be used to identify this kind of issues? Okay, static analysis, yeah, uh, can be very good, still uh, uh, can create a, a lot of uh, information. Blind fuzzing, uh, which is actually blind, so you don't know where going. And runtime, runtime taint analysis. Let's talk, uh, uh, what are we going to uh, analyze. Uh, we, we are uh, quite uh, uh, used to uh, think about, uh, analyze uh, the server side. So we have, uh, uh, we have uh, very good code to analyze, the, the one on your right. Uh, on the client side, you have to analyze code like that, which is very hard to do it manually, of course. And uh, so one can think, okay, let's go with static analysis. Yeah, because um, when there is a quite good maturity uh, level on, uh, during the uh, SDLC, in the SDLC, static analysis for uh, identif identifying secure software is kind of uh, uh, a must. Um, because it's uh, scalable uh, and, and so on. Uh, so we are quite used to, to think about uh, uh, static analysis as a, a very good uh, way to uh, identify and to uh, re uh, uh, detect uh, most of the, the issues. Uh, yeah, they have in indeed good coverage for uh, um, languages like Java, C Sharp and so on. But on languages like JavaScript, uh, there is, if uh, we want to look for the code, uh, to look for the point where in the code uh, there is uh, uh, this uh, object, location.search, it could be like that, 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 it could be like that. So yeah. it's very hard to identify uh, um, rigid models uh, that, so that can be um, I good points uh, uh, where to start uh, the analysis. Um, just, because, uh, just because it's very hard, uh, there are this, it can, the same thing can be done in several, several ways. So, very poor coverage. Uh, let's go runtime. Runtime blind fuzzing uh, means uh, let's uh, uh, use a hammer and see if uh, something breaks. Huh? Uh, we try to simply uh, give uh, uh, fault injection, so payloads, and see if they are executed someplace. So you are not sh sure you are going to cover all the whole application. Uh, there will be, in this case, as a consequence, very, a lot of false negatives. So you are not, you are not going to find uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, you are going to find a few vulnerabilities. So the third um, solution, the third approach, is called runtime 
or real time taint propagation by using instrumentation of the of the language. Mm. Um, it's uh, the, the flow is followed uh, during uh, the execution. So there is there is no problem for uh, the parser because static analysis have to use a, a, a separate parser. The, the browser is the parser. So is, is the one that is going to execute the code. Um, uh, there is a, a very in, important part, which uh, is uh, the client state uh, that uh, uh, can be um, recreated. So the user logs in inside the browser and then uh, something happens on the client, on the server, and so on. Um, so as Minded Security, um, we created, uh, by using the third approach, uh, uh, a project that instruments uh, a browser and uh, the JavaScript parser of Firefox in particular, and uh, um, al allowing um, the, um, the, a tester, a user, to uh, identify and uh, uh, follow only flows of data that could be actually, that, that are linked to some place where an attacker could control uh, some, in some way, the, uh, the input. So uh, there are no real uh, false positive uh, or a few uh, respect to the static analysis and is very more precise of re respect to blind fuzzing. Uh, when uh, we uh, created the, f the first version of uh, Dominator, in 2010, we took uh, the first uh, top 100 uh, Alexa uh, sites, analyzed them with uh, using uh, that version, and we found in 2010 that uh, 56 were vulnerable to at least one issue uh, regarding client-side uh, um, problem, pro problems. So this is uh, um, this is a screenshot of. Uh, of the of one version of the of Dominator Pro. On top of that, we created Dominator Pro. So Dominator is open source, and on top of the on top of Dominator, we created Dominator Pro, which is a commercial version with a knowledge base, um, um, more uh, um, um, with m much more knowledge base and. Um, and don't, um, can be used manually for uh, fine-tuning, fine, fine uh, identification of uh, um, issues. And uh, for, uh, on top of Dominator Pro, we, we created the Dominator Pro Enterprise that is, uh, can be used uh, for automation, uh, for automation of, uh, of the tests. Indeed, it's pos it has a web br browser-based crawler and uh, web management interface uh, and is, can, be, can be controlled remotely by using a Selenium interface that is a way to connect the browser uh, with uh, um, remotely and control it uh, uh, just like uh, um, from wherever you want uh, some place in the world and recreate uh, um, uh, test cases, which is the most important part. <clears throat> and so on. So, just uh, a real uh, small demo. We just uh, lo launched the Domi Dominator and uh, um, the, the um, Dominator Enterprise, and uh, it launches the f uh, mm, the browser, but is completely automatic, uh, it's completely controlled by uh, automation and uh, it just uh, goes around and crawls all the sites and uh, simulate, uh, emulate clicks uh, by a user, a real user. So it's like uh, uh, not, there is no more using a network scanner but we are using a real uh, browser. So JavaScript is going to be executed and so on. Uh, we go, it goes and starts uh, to collect data, follow the flow, 
and um, um, it's, uh, there is also some fuzzing to um, uh, wide, widen the coverage and so on. So after, after some, uh, um, du during this, uh, this uh, phase, simply uh, all the issues are collected and, uh, and are, are collected and you are going to Uh, to access all to the issues that are found by a web-based uh, interface that gets uh, from uh, the issues database and simply um, interpret them and show them in a, a human uh, understandable way. Um, so it, there are several uh, uh, categorization. It's, it's, it gives the status of the crawler and uh, gives uh, the possibility to, uh, of course, uh, um, have a look at uh, the issues, get the description of the attack that the vulnerability could, uh, could uh, result to, and uh, <coughs> give uh, uh, the line of code where the issue happened, because since JavaScript is inside the browser, uh, we have access to the code. <coughs> of course, from uh, uh, the source, which means, uh, uh, in this case, uh, it's called location.hash, uh, means that that is an object that an attacker could control and uh, goes the, to, the, to a sync, which means that the sync is uh, um, uh, a function or a feature that can be abused by an attacker. says where it can be um, exploited. Some, sometimes uh, it's uh, directly, uh, can be used only on a particular browser, and so on. <coughs> so, last, uh, uh, yeah. last page. Uh, who is this for? Uh, developers, in order to um, recreate uh, Unix, uh, un unit and functional testing, test their own code, and so on. QA tester, uh, for the same reasons, and uh, um, have uh, the issue as uh, much uh, as, as possible um, um, before. Uh, as, as possible, and um, uh, security test of testers, of course, uh, uh, for uh, the... Uh, uh, what is very interesting is that third-party JavaScript as well can be, can be um, tested. These are uh, uh, several companies that uh, um, have uh, uh, had something to do with Dominator Pro uh, because uh, we found uh, issues or, uh, or, or simply they uh, bought uh, uh, our product. Okay, if uh, you have any question. So how does this integrate with what we saw earlier? Um, and, and do the two interact at all? Or, I mean, they are completely different types of technologies, but do they actually work together at all? There, is, uh, there, are, there are several parts in the implementation of the solutions because Th there are uh, 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 techniques that uh, merge themselves because we have to do bo in both uh, uh, solution, in both in products with uh, and problems with uh, the DOM, so with the page, uh, HTML page, and so on. In this case, um, we have uh, to uh, prevent attacks that uh, could change the page, the content of the page, without the installation of some malware. So it's still, there is still the possibility to uh, have some kind of man in the browser attack without having the malware to, in, to infect the victim. No? Uh, so there is uh, this kind of links in, in this kind of link uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, um, in this vision, in our vision. Um, also, uh, we have, 
we are we are an application security company and uh, application is uh, uh, the, the most the most important part for us so software um, from the defense point of view uh, uh, must be um, covered uh, in several ways no so uh, these uh, um, deals with uh, hard problems uh, trying to find uh, a solution that could be uh, easy, easily use, usable. Mm? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>